Hey guys and welcome back. In this video I want to touch on a handful of polls that have been released over the past couple of days and I was very interested to see how the data was going to be moving around. After we had a lot that transpired over this past week where we worked our way through the debate, we had the disagreement between Sanders and Warren both before, during, and after the debate and the news cycles that surrounded that. And then also the campaigns have been sniping back and forth at each other over this past week. So there's a lot of things that could have possibly shifted around these numbers. And in general, it seems like it has been a net positive for the Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, whereas his upper tier competitors in this primary have either been hovering around the same numbers or maybe taking a little bit of a step back. So this is a CNN national poll that was just released this morning, and it is the first CNN national poll throughout this entire process that actually has Bernie Sanders in first place at 27%. He's up seven points from where he was just a month ago in mid-December. Joe Biden in second place at 24, followed by Elizabeth Warren at 14, Buttigieg at 11, and then everyone else is in mid to lower single digits with Bloomberg at five, Klobuchar and Yang at four, and Steyer at two percentage points. And who would you rather be at this point in time? So the top two candidates, Sanders and Biden, over the past handful of months, you have Sanders going from 16 to 17 to 20 to 27, or you have Joe Biden, who's gone from 34 to 28 to 26 to 24. Obviously, you'd rather be the candidate that is surging in a positive direction as we're just a couple of weeks away from going in to the Iowa caucuses. And there is a lot of positive momentum behind the Sanders campaign and the fact that in some of these national polls, he's either closing that gap between himself and Biden or even taking the lead in some instances like we're seeing in this one with this brand new national CNN poll. So now I want to move over and take a look at this week's morning consult data that also was just released this morning. And we can see Sanders taking another step closer to Biden now within five percentage points. These morning consult polls have in general been a bit more bullish on Joe Biden than what we've gotten from a lot of other national polls. But Bernie Sanders has been able to close that gap a bit. And this is actually the closest he's been to Biden since nearly a year ago, back when Sanders first made his announcement that he was running. He got very close to Joe Biden, and that was before Biden had announced that he was going to be running. And ever since Joe Biden announced he shot up to a huge lead and has kind of been more or less receding and then staying steady right at around 30 percentage points for the better part of the past half year. But we have seen Sanders go from more or less around the mid-teens to over this past handful of months, gaining little by little on the way to now being in a very strong second place at 24% up one point from where he was a week ago. And then Elizabeth Warren also up a percentage point to 15 points. Michael Bloomberg taking a step past Pete Buttigieg in this one at 10% up two points, Buttigieg staying even there at 8%, and then Yang at four, Steyer at three, and Amy Klobuchar also at three percentage points. And going to dive in a bit deeper to this morning consult data. So the early states, we see Biden at 26, which is down a point from where he was a week ago. Sanders up four points in the early state. And then also Tom Steyer still showing some strength in these early areas where he's bringing in 15 percentage points. We'll see if he's actually able to achieve anything close to that as we work our way through Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada. And then we see Warren, not a great sign from her, as well as Pete Buttigieg at 12 and 11 percentage points, respectively. And then Yang at four, Bloomberg at three, and Tulsi Gabbard at three percentage points. Now, Warren doing a little bit worse than her national numbers in the early states, which is not a good sign for her. Buttigieg is showing a little bit more strength than what his national numbers are telling us, but not a huge surprise there where he tends to pull a bit better in Iowa and New Hampshire than where he does in a lot of other areas. So then we see Super Tuesday tightening up between Biden and Sanders, where Biden's at 27 and Sanders at 25. And this is Biden receding a point from where he was a week ago in those Super Tuesday states where Sanders was able to pick up two percentage points. Warren even at 15. Bloomberg picks up a couple of points to 11 percent. And then you have Buttigieg at seven, Yang at five, Klobuchar and Steyer each at three percentage points respectively in those Super Tuesday areas. And then among the different age groups, you have Gen Z are with Bernie at 45 percent, Biden at 14. And you have Biden and Sanders in the top two of each category, except for the boomer where Warren and Sanders are tied in that instance in second place. But then you have the millennials, 22 to 37 year olds with Bernie at 40%, Biden at 20 and Warren at uh, 15. Gen X, the 38 to 53 year olds have Biden at 31, Sanders at 22 and Warren at 17. And then the boomers 54 to 72 have Biden at 34, 
Warren at 14, as well as Bernie Sanders also there at 14, and Bloomberg at 13, pretty competitive there with Warren and Sanders with those baby boomers, the older age demographics. Now, Sanders is actually showing more strength with the younger age demographics in these morning consult numbers than the strength that Biden is showing with the older age groups, but those younger age groups are a bit smaller in terms of their sample sizes in general. So that is also a bit of the difference that you get there, why Joe Biden still has the national lead over over the senator from Vermont. And then race and ethnicity. It's pretty competitive at the top there between Biden and Sanders at 26 and 22. The African-American vote, Sanders is starting to become a bit more competitive with that at 25%, but Biden's still strong at 41 the Hispanic vote, Bernie leads it at 36 compared to Biden at 22. The Asian American is actually mirroring quite a bit the white vote other than the difference between Andrew Yang, but they have Biden at 26, Sanders at 22, and then the other demographic, Sanders also doing well in that instance at 39%, and Joe Biden at 25%. And then the liberals now actually have Bernie out in front ahead of Biden at 28 to 25, and this is the largest uh, sample size here at nearly 7,000. The moderates have Biden leading Sanders by 16 points, and the conservatives have Biden leading Sanders by 15 percentage points. And now taking a look at the second choice among these individuals, and not exactly what I was expecting. I thought there would be quite a fall off of second choice among Bernie and Warren supporters amongst themselves, but not as much so the case as what I was figuring might happen after this past week that transpired. So you have Joe Biden leading the the way, obviously, overall for the national share of vote. But his second choice is Sanders at 28, Warren at 21, Bloomberg at 17. With Bernie, it's Warren still the second choice there at 30, with Biden at 27 and Yang at 10. And then with Warren, extremely strong numbers from Bernie Sanders, the second choice among her supporters at 37%, Biden at 20, Buttigieg at 11, and then Bloomberg has Biden at 35, Sanders at 15. And the better that Michael Bloomberg does, the more that he might pull Joe Biden back to be more competitive with Bernie Sanders at the top because Michael Bloomberg, a lot of his supporters are coming from older voters and individuals that would in general be more favorable towards Biden. Then you have Pete Buttigieg. His second choice are Warren and Biden very close to each other. And then also Sanders and Bloomberg uh, fairly close with the rest of the second choice options among Buttigieg supporters. So with favorability, Sanders taking a bit of a step back and maybe not a huge surprise considering all that's gone on in the news over this past week. But even though it has hurt him a little bit with his favorability, it has been a net positive for him in terms of increasing his number of first choices among the voters. He still has the best overall net favorability, but it's becoming a bit more competitive between him and Joe Biden. And then you see how the rest of the field plays out behind those individuals. And then I also want to touch on the general election matchup where you have Biden leading Trump by five points, Sanders leading Trump by three points, Warren leading him by two, Bloomberg by one percent, and then Buttigieg losing to Trump by one percentage point in the breakup among the party voters where you have Democratic voters, of course, very strong among their Democratic options with Biden doing the best. Independent voters are showing Bernie Sanders having the most strength again this week, just like we saw a week ago. And then Biden, the second strongest, followed by Bloomberg, Warren, and then Buttigieg. And then with Republican voters, it's actually very similar among all of the upper tier candidates with Buttigieg showing the most weakness and then Biden showing the most strength, but relatively close and competitive among all of the top five options among Republican voters. All right, guys, so three more polls that I wanted to touch on to close out this video. So this past weekend, we got some national data out of Survey USA, but they finally released their head-to-head -head matchups, and it shows Bernie Sanders doing the best head-to-head -head with him and Donald Trump, where he's winning by nine points. Biden is leading Trump by seven. Also, Bloomberg uh, leading by seven. Elizabeth Warren by three. Buttigieg by three. Andrew Yang by two. Tom Steyer is tied. And then you have Klobuchar losing by two points and Tulsi Gabbard losing by five percentage points to Donald Trump. And then this is a Tolchin research poll that was taken in the middle portion of January about two weeks ago or so, but they just released their data today for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they didn't do it back when it was actually taken, but it shows in California, Bernie Sanders leading the way at 28%. And then Biden followed at 
And then Elizabeth Warren was down there at 12%. And then Pete Buttigieg was next in line at eight percentage points out in the very important state of California that, of course, has their primary up in Super Tuesday and just a treasure trove of pledged delegates that are going to be up for grabs. Now moving over to this Suffolk research poll that just came out yesterday from the state of New Hampshire, and it shows that Bernie Sanders is leading the way in first place at nearly around 16 and a half percentage points. And then the rest of the field is pretty close in terms of the upper tier candidates where you have Biden close to around 15 percent. You have Buttigieg there at around 12 percent, Warren at around 10 percent. So all the top four options are within striking distance of each other. Uh, but Bernie Sanders leading the way. And then also undecided is getting quite a bit of the margin here at 23.8 percent. If I was to guess where these individuals might go when they actually vote, it would probably more likely be towards maybe a Sanders or a Biden than the rest of the field. And that's probably why they're a bit more competitive in this instance with those other candidates, given the fact that they give undecided as an option. And those were the five polls that I wanted to touch on here. We had three national numbers and then a couple of state specific results looking at California as well as New Hampshire. And if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter, you have to be really enthusiastic about the direction that he's been trending over the past month or so. And the fact that we've worked our way through a relatively controversial week in terms of all of the news that has been talked about and discussed. And we had a debate and then we had the Sanders Warren kerfuffle and then the different campaigns have been sniping back and forth at each other. And it seems to have been more so a net positive for Sanders than it has so for Biden and Warren. We'll continue to see if this is the case or not as I continue to track these numbers and go over them for you guys. Hey guys, so as I was uploading this video to YouTube, I noticed that another brand new national poll had been released. And instead of waiting for my next video to cover it, I thought I would put it right in here. So this one came from The Economist and YouGov. And in general, this has been a bit more of a positive resource, particularly for Elizabeth Warren and maybe to a little bit lesser of an extent, Joe Biden. And definitely it has been a poll that Sanders has had his issues with from time to time. Now, Sanders had been doing a little bit better in these Economist and YouGov polls, but he takes a step back in this week's results. So starting off in terms of the voters who are considering voting for these different candidates, you have Biden, Sanders, and Warren all relatively close with each other at Biden getting 49% of consideration for that first choice vote, Bernie at 46, Warren as well at 46, and then you get a bit of a gap before you get down to Buttigieg, Bloomberg, and Klobuchar who are at 27, 25, and 20 percentage points. Yang is at 18 along with Tom Steyer at 15, and then everyone else is in the mid to lower single digits. And then we go down and take a look at how these individuals are picking their first option. And Biden gains a point from where he was a week ago, now in first place at 28%. Warren picked up a couple of points from where she was last week, now at 21%, whereas Sanders takes a step back, losing three percentage points at 18% in third place. And then all the other candidates in single digits with Buttigieg at eight, Bloomberg at six, Klobuchar at four, Yang and Gabbard each at 3%. And then Tom Steyer is at two points. So this is telling a little bit of a different story than those other polls that I took a look at. And it's important to get as much data as possible to paint as broad of a picture as you can in terms of how things are trending. So even though Bernie had been taking big step forwards in some of those other instances or coming in first place or showing a stronger second place, in this instance, he takes a little bit of a step back in third place behind Elizabeth Warren. But again, for context sake, it is worth noting that these economists, YouGov polls in general, have been the most bullish on Elizabeth Warren than where we typically see the average of her national number. So that is something to keep in mind. So if you're interested in getting more up-to-date polling data, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and I hope to see you guys back here for my next video.